Ooh. Woo. Paladin. Paladin is pretty fucking good. Paladin's really good. Here's one very pleasant change that I was not expecting. When you zone in, you have full gauge. That is really, really awesome. Paladin pulling is no longer a downside at all whatsoever. Keeping the boss is fine. You will run out of CDs sooner than the other tanks because you don't have as many. However, tanks can help each other, you know, and you can always tank swap. But starting with full gauge is fucking poggers. Let's look at what Paladin got. It got upgraded spirits within. It's also no longer tied to your damage. It got Holy Sheltron, which is ridiculous ridiculously awesome. Wreck has changed. It's now way better. It's not tied to your mana and it lasts for 30 seconds now. Wreck and 70 content is amazing now. Yeah. Basically Wreck now is insta cast. It makes all your stuff insta cast. Uh, it's tied to the ability, not the trait. So this is like super good, man. Atonement stacks now last for 30 seconds, which is really good. And then you got Confidior combo. Confidior combo is very fun to do. It's also a ranged attack. Super fucking good. Every single paladin change was good. You can even pop your own veil now. So it's like that fucking good. Even veil got Got better because you heal yourself with Holy Spirit. Paladin got so much quality of life, so many good changes, man. It's fucking crazy and it's so fun. It's super fun now because you don't have to worry about your atonement stacks falling off anymore. You can pop wreck. Like basically, Paladin now, the amount of control and manipulation you can do to your GCDs is crazy. It's really, really, really fucking cool, man. And that's awesome. Just the fact that you can pop wreck like fucking 15 seconds early is awesome and you keep your stacks for like 30 seconds now so that's just so fucking good man holy sheltron is obviously super fucking good too the heal is nice but it also blocks a shit ton of damage intervention got buffed obviously veil got a little better just based on the hp that you heal through holy spirit so you could actually use your veil during uh your wreck window and then pop it you know proc it passage is still really good you know the same or whatever but still really good clemency used to be like 1200 potency i think this is still really good too. Also, this isn't affected by wreck anymore, which is a little bit of a bummer. There would be certain times like during like clear parties or something where you could pop wreck and then get like this massive fucking clemency. It would be really cool. So yeah, every change that Paladin got was super good. Just for those of you that didn't see it. The biggest thing, probably the shit here, is the Confidior combo. Um, it basically just replaces the Goring Blade that you would do after... So like this dot here, sustaining damage over time, it's basically Goring Blade. That's all it is. And they can't stack. So when you apply your Goring Blade, it'll like override it and vice versa. The Confidior combo is like really flashy. It's also ranged, so it's super good. But at the baseline, it's basically just a Goring Blade combo. So it's just a really, really fancy Goring Blade combo. Yeah, there are eight GCDs range. It is AoE. Yeah, you can peel off the boss for longer. If you want to keep the Paladin rotation lined up with certain buffs, instead of dropping a Holy Spirit, you drop an Atonement. Because Holy Spirit's higher damage now. The Paladin rotation is already really good. If you think Paladin rotation is boring, then you probably suck ass at Paladin. Paladin rotation, if you're trying to min-max it, it's going to be different for each fight. If you think Paladin rotation is boring, then you probably suck shit at Paladin. You're probably just ignorant. You don't actually know how to play it. Like, let's say you know that there's going to be forced downtime. You know, you can do shit like this. So you can pop your wreck early. And if you know there's going to be forced downtime, right? So let's say there's going to be forced downtime in like two GCDs. Okay, well, you do this. And yeah, sure, you lose some stuff under um, fight or flight. But it's a big gain because you're not actually losing any GCDs. So you lose potency, but not, but you don't actually drop any GCDs. And that is very, 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 very fucking cool. Like the fact that you can do that, like no other tanks can do that. So it's really awesome because people seem to think that if you don't do a GCD under a buff that it's complete loss. But I can promise you getting downtime is the worst loss besides dying. Like, so let's take a look at two tanks. Let's take a look at Warrior and Paladin. Let's say that you're forced away from the boss for three GCDs. There's no way to greed that. Well, a Paladin can just proc wreck early, miss those three GCDs under the buff of Fight or Flight, and cast Holy Spirits instead, and then go back to the boss, finish their physical, and then continue their Holy Spirit and into Confidior. So yes, they lose potency. However, they don't lose as much compared to the other tank because the other tank just straight couldn't even attack. 
Well, I guess they were throwing, they were chucking tomahawks. They were in tomahawk town. I guess the tank was getting a nice hundred potency. So I guess they were doing that, but you know. So basically just the fact that you can do that on Paladin is really awesome. That's some cool stuff that you can do that you couldn't do before because uh, Wreck didn't last 30 seconds and Atonement didn't last 30 seconds. It's gonna make um, Paladin on Prague really, really strong. Like overall kit, it's already like super good. But now that you can manipulate your GCDs in that way even more, that's gonna be really valuable. It's gonna be super valuable. If there's downtime but there are some things that are bad on paladin well not bad but just kind of like why didn't they change this so a couple things that i do think that need to be changed still is uh this whenever i say you never use this people always say no no you used it in e6 so that the melee could keep up time just think about that for a second just think about it for a second do you think that that's really the intended use for this ability do you think when the devs designed this ability they were like yeah let's make it to where the paladin can cover the fucking monk in e6 no dude they didn't okay this is extremely niche and very rarely used extremely extremely limited usages okay and here's another thing too it still has a fucking oath gauge on it like let me ask you guys this question if they took the oath gauge off do you think that this ability would see much more use because i don't it's an emergency save i don't think so i think you'd rather just fucking use intervention i think that this would just be a dead ability on your hotbar even without the oath gauge like people don't understand what made cover super good what made cover super good was the fact that it had a built-in rampart and once they took that away cover really wasn't good anymore now don't get me wrong do i think people have saved runs with this absolutely i think it has happened i'm not saying it's never happened i'm just saying the amount of time that it has happened i think that because because it's so low i think they need to increase this moves like i guess usability you could expand the use of cover if you put a healing over time because in that way you could cover them before the damage or after the damage and they'd still get the benefit i think that would be really cool whenever i think of cooldowns i think of them as how wide they are we wide boys okay we want to be a wide cooldown okay now let me explain what the difference is between like a skinny cooldown and a wide cooldown in my brain a skinny cooldown is like this fucking miserable pile of shit right here this is a skinny cooldown. This has one use, that's it. You use it when you know it's gonna pop, that's it. Now, let me tell you what a wide cooldown is. This is a wide cooldown. <sighs> we wide. Now, let me explain to you why this is wide. You use this as a tank cooldown. You use this to heal yourself. You use this for shake it off. See that, that's wide. With all that being said, I feel like the cover, if they put a hot on it, you could actually use this on a tank after they took damage to save a healer GCD. Or let's say a DPS took a stack you cover them so that they don't die to raid damage. You're not only protecting them, but you're also healing them so that the healer doesn't have to heal. So basically, if they put a heal on cover, and also you'd also remove the gauge cost too. I, I just don't understand why this is a two minute cooldown and 50 gauge, like holy shit, man. Fuck, dude, it's in the grave. It's like, it's like they took cover, put it in the grave, pissed on the grave, poured gasoline on the grave, lit the grave on fire, and then dropped a nuclear bomb just to make sure that it was really dead. You know what I mean? Like, dude, it's on a two minute cooldown and it costs 50 gauge. What the fuck is wrong with you? It's not even that good. Like the amount of restrictions on this cooldown is just crazy to me. It's nuts. Yeah, so that was one thing that I was wanting to change. Veil, I, I do still wish that it would auto proc, but the fact that you can just heal yourself with whole Holy Spirit, it kind of makes that not a factor anymore, so it's pretty good. The other complaint I have is Hollow Ground. I have not been the biggest fan of this ability. There are times when this ability is super, super good, like in T, but not very often. The cooldown on this ability is just so long, man. The fact that it makes you invulnerable to 10 seconds, it's not that good. <laughs> I know it seems like it would be that good, but in actual use, home gang shits all over this, man. It really does. The only time that this is better is when you get the same amount of usages, like when you get the same amount of hollowed usages and they're both at convenient times. That doesn't happen very often. So believe it or not, I did go to a media tour. And when I went to the media tour, Yoshi told me that he thought hollowed ground was overpowered. I literally said, nah, it's not that good or something like that. Cause I remember I was like, oh shit. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. You know, cause it just came out. Yeah, but he said it was overpowered. And uh, yeah, I don't agree with him. <laughs> 
Uh, this is not overpowered. The times that you use it, obviously, yeah, it's going to be good. It fucking makes you invulnerable. Yeah, of course it's going to be good. <laughs> yeah, but it's also on a fucking seven minute cooldown. Bolide's on six minutes and does virtually the same thing. Like, Bolide is hollowed ground, but better. The order of invulns, in my opinion, is you have Home Gang, Bolide, Hollowed Ground, and then light years and light years away in another galaxy that's dead. At the center of the galaxy, there's a dying star and everything's cold and there's nothing alive. That's living dead. Yo, I really like this job, man. I really do. I do think its damage needs to be buffed a little bit. TLDR on Paladin. I think Paladin saw the most impressive changes. I think it saw the most quality of life. And I think it had very little and arguably no downsides. I think Paladin is super, super good, man. I think that if you liked Paladin and Shadowbringers, you are probably blown away by Paladin and Endwalker. Now, those of you that are not blown away, that are worried about its damage, first of all, you have little penises. If you judge a tank by its damage, your dick is tiny. And you know what? If you're judging a tank by its damage, it doesn't matter if you're playing the highest damage tank. You're still going to be shit. Yes. Like, basically, if your mentality is, I can only only play the tank that does the highest damage, then you're trash at the game. Because anybody that I know that is good at this game will not let the damage of a tank dictate if that's what they're going to play. The only thing that is going to dictate that shit is like prog, but that's a whole other conversation. That's a whole other conversation. The people that I respect, they don't have that mentality because that's a stupid mentality. Yes, Paladin right now needs to see a little bit of a damage boost, a little bit. I think the people that are upset about Paladin Paladin's damage right now is first off, it was way too high in Shadowbringers. If you guys think that Paladin should deal as much damage as a Dark Knight, you're crazy. Dark Knight should deal the most damage. Paladin should not. It has the most utility and it can attack from range for eight fucking GCDs out of a minute. Like, get the fuck out of here, dude. You kidding me? But when I say Paladin should be the lowest damage, I don't mean that its damage should be dog shit. I mean in relation to the other tanks. And by the lowest damage, I don't mean by a significant margin. I mean like, you know, one to two percent. I think that the highest discrepancy should be about 3%. I think the highest tank should be 3% above the lowest tank, like 3 or 4% max. I guess another TLDR on the TLDR. Paladin is absolutely amazing. It received the most quality of life. If you like Paladin and Shadowbringers, you're going to love Paladin and Walker. I've been really enjoying playing it, and I think that it's going to be amazing in Prague.